Hey everyone, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel where my mission is simple and that's to help you pass your real estate exam the first time. In today's real estate exam prep video, we're gonna talk about a law that you have to know for your real estate exam called the Lead-Based Paint Hazard Reduction Act. This federal law was passed in 1992. Memorize that. The real estate exam loves to ask you about when certain uh, you know, what year certain laws were passed. Now, this particular law was passed because there was a need for it. Lead, lead-based paint materials were used, used until July 1st, 1978. And lead is extremely dangerous to young children, particularly those six and under, and then also to women that are pregnant. It causes serious neurological damage and that damage is permanent. It can never be fixed. And once, uh, once a person suffers from lead poisoning, the damage is forever. And the other thing to remember is it's, even though the law targets young children, lead is very dangerous to adults as well. All right, so it's a legitimate issue that the government had to deal with. The law requires buyers, sellers, landlords, and tenants to do certain things. There are certain requirements, and we have to know these requirements, all right? It requires sellers and owners. Now, when I say owners, I mean landlords or property managers that are authorized to represent the owners. So it requires sellers and owners to provide a lead-based paint disclosure to all buyers and tenants of dwellings that were built prior to 1978 not including 1978, even though the federal government allowed manufacturers of lead-related materials to sell their product up through July 1st, 1978. They did not include 1978. So it's 1977 and older. No. Now, having said that, there's one other thing you have to understand. That if, let's say, for example, someone owns a garage and that garage is zoned as light industrial. And the owner of that garage put an apartment upstairs above the garage and then decided to rent it out. So it's being rented out illegally according to the, the zoning laws. It's still, the, the, the Lead-Based Paint Reduction Act would still apply. Even if the residential dwelling is illegal and that dwelling is being used as a residential dwelling illegally, then this particular lead-based paint law would apply. Now, there are two different lead-based paint disclosures that you have to be familiar with because we have to make sure, depending on the real estate transaction, that we're using the correct uh, lead-based paint disclosure. Here is the first one on your screen. This lead-based paint disclosure is used for sales transaction. And then this particular lead-based paint disclosure form is used for leasing activities. And if you notice, it says lessor lessee. Now remember in real estate, the lessor is the landlord, the lessee is the tenant. Now the Environmental Protection Agency, for whatever reason, felt that the two different disclosures were required. What's really important for you and I, once you get licensed, is that we use the correct disclosure for the correct and relevant real estate transaction. Now let's take a look at what the seller or the owner's responsibilities are under this particular law. Now remember when I say owners, I'm referring to landlords or property managers. So they must disclose the location of any known lead hazards. Now keep this in mind, the only way that we know that there is actual lead in a home is through a test. So that means the property would have had to have been tested. Now it's presumed under the law that any home built prior to 1978 may contain lead hazards, but we don't know that specifically. So the law says, because we presume that there is potentially lead hazards, we have to do, our, our sellers and owners have to provide the lead-based paint disclosure. We discussed that disclosure in the previous uh, the previous slide. However, if a seller or an owner, they have actual knowledge and they know the location of any lead hazards, they have to, they have to notify the tenant or the purchaser of the location and what that lead hazard is. 
Number two, they have to provide any documents related to any lead-based paint hazards. Now, this gets a little confusing because a lot of times people will get tests that are done. They test for lead and the test comes back where there is no, they found no lead. Well, you still have to provide that documentation to any tenant or to any buyer. The law says that the seller or the owner must provide any documentation relating to lead hazards, not any, not only, or, or not just positive results. That is a, that is a misunderstanding that's out there in the community. All right. So keep that in mind. It's documents. It's not the document that only shows positive results. And I know I've killed this dead horse, but I just want to make sure you understand it. Sellers and owners are required to provide the EPA's pamphlet. And that pamphlet is called protect your family from lead in your home. Now keep this in mind, the EPA does update this periodically. So you need to make sure that you're most, using the most recent version of this pamphlet. Number four, now this only applies to purchasers and does not apply to tenants. The owner, I'm sorry, the seller must provide or allow the purchaser a 10 day opportunity to have a lead assessment done. Now the purchaser must pay for that assessment However, the seller cannot say no. The seller cannot reject a purchase offer because the purchaser has requested or, or basically invoked their right to have a 10-day opportunity. What is negotiable is that 10-day period. There is a caveat. If the in the local area, the purchaser can only find one contractor, which in many times is common, and it's going to be 14 days before they can get the assessment done, then the seller must allow 14 days for the purchaser to get the assessment done. What the seller cannot do is negotiate a shorter period of time to get the assessment done, knowing that time-wise, the purchaser will not be able to get it done. Remember in our example, the, the contractor said it's 14 days. The seller says, fine, then I'm gonna give you two days. Well, that would be uh, a disingenuous attempt by the seller to negotiate that 10 day opportunity and they could face serious legal consequences. All right. Number five, the owners and the sellers must sign and date the disclosure. Key here, if there are two sellers on the listing contract, two sellers on the purchase contract, there must be two signatures and two dates on the lead-based paint disclosure. And the same with on the uh, disclosure for the lessee lessor. If there are if there are two tenants and one owner on the on the uh, leasing side, then there must be on the the lead-based paint disclosure for the lessor lessee. There should be two tenants that sign and one owner. Failure to have those extra signatures um, can result in a hefty civil penalty from the EPA. And then number six, the seller or the owner. They're under no obligation to do any testing and they're no under, under no obligation to abate or remove any, any of the lead should any be discovered. Now, they are required to make sure that it's, that it's lead safe, you know, like painting over any chipped or peeling paint. They have to make sure that the areas are, are encapsulated so it's safe, but there is no requirement to test or abate. Now, what are the purchaser or the tenant's responsibilities and duties under our law? Well, first of all, they must acknowledge receiving all reports, test results, documents regarding lead-based paint for, that they have received from the seller or the landlord. And remember, previous slide, the seller and the owner is required to provide that documentation. This, now the purchaser or the tenant is required to acknowledge that they did receive all that documentation. Number two, they are required to acknowledge receiving the, M the EPA's pamphlet, protect your family from lead in your home. All right, they're gonna make that acknowledgement on the lead-based paint disclosure. Number three, purchasers only, this doesn't apply to tenants, purchasers, they have a right to elect to have a lead assessment done or they have a right to waive that requirement. And remember, the purchaser is responsible to pay for that assessment. And then number four, there's a requirement for the purchaser or the tenant to sign and date the disclosures. What are the agent's duties and responsibilities under the law? Well, number one, the agent. Now, the agent's duty, no matter if they're the listing agent, the buyer's agent, or the property manager representing an owner, 
they must inform the seller or the landlord of their duties and responsibilities to disclose and provide documentation. We've already talked about that in this video, All right? They have to tell that seller, hey, if you have reports, you have to make it available to the, to the buyer. They have to inform the owner, hey, if you got any kind of documentation, we got to provide it to the tenant. Number two, provide disclosure to the prospective buyers and tenants or their authorized representatives. What we're talking about here is the lead-based paint disclosure. So we know that they have to provide the documentation, but they also have to provide the actual lead-based paint disclosures. And then number three, the agents involved in the transaction must sign and date the disclosures as well. Now, there are some other requirements under the law that you have to be familiar with. Number one is buyers and tenants. This is so important. Buyers and tenants must sign the lead-based paint disclosure before they sign the purchase contract or the lease agreement. Under the Code of Federal Regulation, if a buyer signs a purchase contract or a tenant signs a lease contract, prior to executing the lead-based paint disclosure, it makes the purchase agreement and the, lead, the lease agreement voidable, all right? So keep that in mind. It must be presented to the purchaser or the tenant and signed by them prior to any contracts being entered into. Number two, understand that state and local governments can, and they have, state-specific lead programs. If you live in a state that has their own um, lead-based paint law, then not only do, the, do people have to comply with the federal side of things, which we discussed in this video, but you have to be familiar with the state side for your state side of your licensing exam. So we've discussed a lot of things in this video that you have to know for your real estate exam. But one other thing you have to realize that this law is very prevalent in the everyday real estate practitioner's life. You have to know this stuff for post-licensing events. You're going to deal with lead-based pain issues your entire career because they're just most of the housing stock was built prior to 1978. Now, if you're going to continue studying, check out this video right here. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Click the little circle to my left, comments and questions down below. See you all in the next video.